Lee cooking with Brandy. Hi chums, look at that intros and all. I spare no expense in my efforts to entertain you lot. Right, we're doing soup tonight. Um, this is going to be red tomato soup. What I have in here is um, one medium potato and one medium onion. Now, it looks like two potatoes and two onions and that's what it is because um, I'm doubling up the quantities. But the quantities I give you are going to be for the basic recipe. This recipe is Delia Smith's recipe for tomato soup that I took and then changed a bit. So that's where I got it from to start with. But like everything, we, we have to start with something and change it. So this is my change. Not a whole lot. Now, so one medium onion, one potato, cut very small. And what that does, and cook for about 20 minutes, so as I've been on, it softens the onion and potato. It takes the, the harshness out of the onion and the starchy taste out of the potato. So that's that. And then the next thing is we put our bowl of goodies in. So what we have here is one and a half pounds of tomato, one clove of garlic, oops, one clove of garlic, and um, one teaspoonful of basil and two um, chilies, two green chilies, and that goes in there and that little boy fell but he's not going to escape. Now, take, hit, whack the heat up a bit, I'll just go back over this again. So in that there was one and a half pounds of tomatoes, or 700 grams of tomatoes, one medium potato, one medium onion, one, sorry, one and a half pounds of tomatoes or 700 grams, one clove of garlic, one teaspoonful of basil, dried basil, and two chilies. Now, if you're going to use fresh basil in this, wait until the end and put in two tablespoonfuls of, of torn up basil, just as you're about to serve it. But myself and Rosemary don't like fresh basil that much, so we stick with the dried basil, so it goes in now. And all you're doing here is just giving, you're just giving the tomatoes a, a chance to heat up a wee bit and get a bit of heat in before we put in the stock. And the stock is very simple too. The stock is just half a pint of chicken stock or vegetable stock. Um, I'm using chicken stock tonight because chicken cubes were the first thing I put my hand on when I opened the cupboard. So chicken it is. Um, so just basically give this a wee bit of a mix around. Sorry about the, the, what do you call it, the extractor going. But if I do this, you can see it gets worse. So I've got it down. I've got it down low so that it doesn't be too noisy but I need something to take the steam away from this because um, if I don't it'll be I'll steam up my camera lens. It's a very precarious situation I'm in here because my camera is on a tripod about half an inch from the edge of the bench. The two outside legs are so <laughs> I've been very careful that I don't end up with a whole lot on the ground. So uh, that's basically all we do. Just about a minute of this crack just to get the thing mixed through and a bit of heat into the onions or into the tomatoes and as you can see you don't have to worry too much of its size you know like there's a big lump of tomato there and there's half a cherry tomato it'll all break down in here anyway you know don't take the skins off we'll be coming to that in a wee minute because I've got part two going over here I didn't I decided not to make you watch me chopping up onions and potatoes because I think you can all do that you know but um, Chop them very small because the potatoes are going to become your sauce if you like, you know. The next thing you put in is half a pint of stock. And that's just the chicken stock there. Just get the last of it out. There. Then the next thing we do is we bring this to a boil and uh, cover it and simmer it for about 40 minutes. Now Delia says 25. But I'm getting better results at 40. The tomatoes break down better, and uh, I think the flavours blend better. So 40 minutes it is for mine. But this, this is like everything else. You do, you do whatever you want to do, basically. These so these are great saucepans. These are saucepans are about 60 years old. They're really old fashioned, and they've been through everything. And you couldn't, I have gone through about three or four sets of saucepans since I got married and there's not one saucepan left compared to these ones which I got from, mostly from my aunt Sarah and from the grandmother and the other granny and just a saucepan here, a saucepan there and these are the ones we use all the time 
they've got good thick bottoms on them, they cook lovely and even, and the food doesn't end up getting scorched like it happens in a lot of ordinary saucepans. So that's just done. Now, over to here. Please excuse all this messing about, but I haven't really got the videoing, the editing thing sorted out yet. So where are we? Right. Um, we're on that. This is the liquidizer, okay? And I'm just going to leave it there because it'll move you across in a minute. So I've got soup in here. Um, if you've got headphones on, this might be a bit noisy. Oh, it's not going to be noisy at all because it's not blocked in. Right, you don't want to do this until your skin is absolutely invisible because we're trying to get the skin out. Now I'm just going to move things about here because there's something else I want to show you. I want to show you a wee way I found to get stuff through a sieve. I'm sure you all know this. I've just discovered it so I'm very happy. Right, there we are. Another wee tip, if you're working, put a, put a, a, a saucepan on a damp cloth and it certainly makes it a lot easier to stops things flying about all over the place, you know. Okay, so there's our lovely soup. Mmm, green. Right, I've spent a lot of time with wooden spoons trying to push this through the sieve. And then I just, one day I just happened to do this. And I lifted the, the ladle and I did that. And look at that, there's a soup through already. Isn't that fantastic? And all that's left is the, the skins and the seeds and the rest in the, in, the, in the bottom. Now what I'll do now is, don't forget that whenever you do this there's going to be, there's going to be good stuff hanging in the bottom so just scrape that off. We want to be frugal don't we? Right there you go and look there's all the gunk, there's all the gunk ready to go into the little pot on the side of the, the, the sink. So that's that. So there you are, folks. Um, I, I don't know what this is like. So I'm, going to, I'm going to give it a wee taste. It's, it's very thick. It's, 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 what happened was the last time we did this, I put it through the sieve, but I didn't take, I didn't blend it first. So I ended up with this red water, and it was like a consomme. It wasn't really great at all, you know. Try this here to see what it's like. Excuse me. You know what? That's absolutely spot on. It doesn't taste like the like it doesn't have that harshness that raw tomatoes have. That is really spot on. So there are folks, green tomato soup, and uh, I hope that we thing with it. The call it uh, this the soup spoon. The ladle was useful to you. Okay, so that's it, folks. Um, if there's anything else comes up and any more recipes, I'll uh, fire them up. So there you go. So dee dee dee, cooking with Brendan. All right, bye bye, folks.